Hey everyone, I'm Octopimp, and this is Dodger's Show. So Dodger asked me to fill in for her today, and I picked out some stories I thought were pretty cool, and I'm going to share them with you. First off, I wanted to talk about the Rising Thunder technical alpha that's going on right now. If you're not familiar, Rising Thunder is a new fighting game by Seth Killian, who is a previous Capcom employee uh, and game designer currently. Uh, if you've ever watched Evo or the Grand Finals, he usually commentates. He commentated this year with James Chen. He's a really smart guy, super cool. Uh, actually, the character Seth in uh, Street Fighter 4 is named after him, so that's a little tidbit for you. So Rising Thunder is a robot fighting game. You're playing like giant robots and you beat each other up. The big selling point on it is that special moves are simplified to be push button inputs. So instead of doing like a quarter circle forward or half circle back, you just push a button and it does it. Does the special move. So you don't have to do 360 to do your SPD or anything like that. Spinning pile driver. So it's basically just... You push a button and it, and it does the special move. This, however, has the oversight of a lot of people that they, they don't see that that doesn't take away the links. So, you know, like combos, having to memorize the punches and kicks for a combo or using cancels in the middle of a combo to extend your combo. A cancel is when you cancel the animation of a attack and then keep going to extend the hit stun so that you can keep comboing your opponent. So just because you have push button special moves, that doesn't mean that you automatically do combos or anything like that. We'll have to see how the game develops, but I'd like to see more, I'd like to get my hands on it and try it, but from the combo f video footage that I've seen on, the, on YouTube, it looks like it's still just a pretty regular fighting game, it's just that you can't use your com your special moves in rapid succession so you can't like spam shoryuken or hadouken or anything like that or the equivalents of this game whatever they may be so you have to ration them out because if you use them and they whiff then well, you're kind of out of luck if you're really interested in trying it out you can go to risingthunder.com and sign up for the technical alpha and hopefully you'll get in so i'd love to get my hands on it and try some matches but from what i've seen it doesn't look that different Next up, the Anno 2205 beta has been cancelled. So the Anno series is a city building slash economic trade simulation game series. And the newest installment, Anno 2205, is coming out, uh, being published by Ubisoft. And they made a post today saying that the closed beta was cancelled. Originally they had said if you pre-order the game you can get into the closed beta and that's kind of the incentive to, to pre-purchase it. However, they basically just said, there's no beta anymore. You just have to buy it when it comes out. But we'll give you a skin for one of your ships. The game is all based on the water, so it's a lot of ships. But everybody's understandably pretty pissed because they bought this, pre-ordered this, as fans of the series saying, oh, well, I'll get into the closed beta and see it, you know, early before everybody else. But now Ubisoft's just saying, no, no, no beta anymore. You just have to kind of deal with it. Understandably, everyone's real mad about this and demanding refunds and saying, well, you're probably just going to put this, sh this exclusive ship up for sale anyway so other people can buy. And they're probably right. So companies, don't ever do that. Don't ever promise your fans something and then take it away and offer them something pretty crappy in return, like a ship skin. That's real dumb. Uh, so let's hope that they can kind of fix this mistake because it's pretty bad and a lot of people are real mad about it. New footage for the Total War Warhammer game has been released, and it's the Battle of Blackfire Pass. If you're not familiar with Warhammer Fantasy Battles, it's a miniature tabletop game that's been around since 1983, so it's got a long, long history behind it, but this is the first time it's been merged with the Total War series. Total War usually focuses on historical battles like Shogun in, in ancient Japan or uh, Napoleon or Rome, so normally they take the historical approach, but this time Creative Assembly decided to get the Warhammer license and pick up a more exciting, if you ask me, kind of setting. Uh, I love Warhammer Fantasy Battles, I'm a huge fan, I'm a Skaven player. Uh, and so it's really cool that they're merging these two because it looks awesome. The the setting is great. The models are great. The animations could use a little bit of work, especially there's a cavalry charge animation where like they kind of just like run right into the infantry and nothing happens. But they've said that they're working on it and it's not done. This, however, 
is a pattern that people have seen with Creative Assembly and with the Total War games, where they promise you something and they show you something and it looks really cool, but then it's released and it's not so great. The release of Rome 2 was in that vein. Stuff didn't really work and it didn't look great and the animations weren't fantastic. So it's... But they fixed it recently and they have put out some stuff that has really made it good. So hopefully if it's running on that same engine, they kind of have a better grip on it and they can say, oh yeah, okay, we get it. We want to make sure that this product is finished and polished so it's good when you play it. But technical glitches aside, the game looks so cool. There's all sorts of awesome spells and units and, and interesting stuff. And I hope it's more than just green skins and... Um, humans and the empire because there's so many awesome interesting armies in the warhammer fantasy battle universe i'd love to see lizard men i'd love to see skaven i'd love to see vampire counts so many up uh, tomb kings all sorts of awesome flavorful interesting armies that could be used on the battlefield and would look so cool so give us that creative assembly come on so Squaresoft announced a new game called Final Fantasy Explorers. It's sort of an action RPG looking kind of thing. Uh, the graphics are very reminiscent of Bravely the Default. So with the tiny characters, you know, very cute, very kawaii, if you will. And it's a action RPG. Uh, they say the focus is going to be cooperative multiplayer. So that's new for a Final Fantasy. Um, I guess Crystal Chronicles could also be considered cooperative multiplayer because try playing that game single player, am I right? But it looks like it's very much more uh, class-based. They say that there's going to be over 20 classes, uh, and then they said that it was like, oh yeah, with warrior, monk, white mage, black mage. I'm like, I get it. It's a Final Fantasy game. Of course you're going to have those classes. What else are you going to give me? The other neat thing that they showed is you can turn into other Final Fantasy protagonists using the trance system. They showed uh, the character turning into lightning, into squall, into cloud, because you can't have a Final Fantasy game without cloud. Am I right? So... I want to see more stuff there, I want to see uh, kind of what the mission system is going to be like, what the plot is, so yeah, I'm, I'm on board, it looks neat. Speaking of games that could be neat, Endless Space 2 just got announced by Amplitude Studios. If you haven't played Endless Space 1, it's awesome, it's super super cool. It's If you've played Pax Imperia Eminent Domain, it's very similar to that. Uh, also if you haven't played Pax Imperia Eminent Domain, go play that. Uh, it's you, you have solar systems that are connected and you warp between them and you colonize different planets and set up uh, like planet enhancements and you know you research technology it's really cool I don't want to say it's Civ in space because it's not uh, the way that the navigation works is very different the way that the tech trees work is very different but it's super super cool you get to make your own race um, you can use pre-made ones or like take traits and then make your own. It's really, really fun. They also made another game called Endless Legend that's more fantasy based and it's more like Civ because you have a map that you walk around on. That's also really, really cool. But, uh, Endless Space 2 is, I'm excited. I mean, I loved Endless Space 1 and if you did too, I'm sure it's going to be good. Uh, there's not really any footage of it yet, but there's a teaser you can check out that's pretty neat, and they have it up on their website, so you can go look at it there. And lastly, Rogue State got announced on Greenlight. It is a strategy... Wow, that is kind of the theme for this week, isn't it? A strategy game that's sort of like Tropico, but Middle Eastern setting. If you haven't played Tropico, you take the role of a dictator on sort of a, a Caribbean island. Um, you, uh, you have to build it up and fight for the people. Uh, you can like choose how you want to run your your state and your your security and everything like that And it looks really really similar to this so Rogue state is you take the place of somebody that's just overthrown the previous regime of your of your country And you have to decide you know how you want to run it how you want to put funding for religious stuff as and uh, uh, Economic stuff so there's all sorts of stuff to keep track of uh, it looks really complicated. The thing that caught my eye the most are the graphics. They looked sort of in that weird era of computer games before they started doing awkward 3D and were doing like really detailed like pixel stuff. So, but it's not like super retro pixel. It's like an awkward stage of pixel art. Like, look at this. Look at the screenshots, and you'll totally know what I mean. Uh, it looks like like SimCity 2 kind of. It's hard to describe, but when you see it, you'll you'll be like, oh yeah, I totally know what you mean. 
It looks cool. Uh, I guess there's roguelike elements to it too. So I'd love to see more of what that means. But I guess if it gets greenlit, we'll see. So it's it's not hasn't been greenlit yet, but it is on greenlight for voting. So go check it out and see if you want to vote for it. So that's my news. I wanted to say thanks to Dodger for letting me host her show this week. And if you want to see some of my stuff, you can go to youtube.com slash therealoctopimp. I do anime parodies and a bridge series of the show Free Iwatobi Swim Club. It's kind of funny. Check it out. I hope you like it. I also do gaming content sometimes, and I stream on Twitch, my Twitch, twitch.tv slash therealoctopimp. And follow me on Twitter at therealoctopimp. So yeah, go check out my stuff, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.